Everybody, my name is Carlos Lopez. I am the Global Programs Director for Magicians Without Borders, and we are about to start our third episode of Magicians Without Borders Conversations. So here we go. Welcome, everybody, wherever you're at. My name is Carlos Lopez, as I said, and now I am starting this Magicians Without Borders conversation, the third episode. And today we're going to talk about a very special subject that has to do with the genesis of Magicians Without Borders and is magic for the homeless. So in order to talk about this, please 
a welcome tom verner our founder how are you tom i am fantastic carlos it's so good to see you and good to be back again this is becoming a habit wednesday evenings i get to talk with you so and lots of other people i hope so here we are great to be yeah. here we hope that this uh, habit as, as you mentioned uh, keeps on uh, uh, going for a while and it's a good thing that we you know have all these tools available to us to make this a reality so yeah. um, well, last time we we talked about you know how your experience on your first trip uh, your first official trip of magicians without borders to ethiopia remember yeah absolutely um, and you did some shows for refugees so um, just remind us, what was uh, uh, the, uh, what was it like, I mean, uh, going to that refugee camp and why was it important doing magic for people that did not have a home? Uh, well, let me just step back for a second. You know, our mission, uh, Magicians Without Borders, um, is to use the art of magic to entertain, educate, and empower. But for the first six or so years, um, we really only did entertainment, you know? And we did entertainment uh, for primarily refugees and orphans. And that very, very first trip um, was to Ethiopia. And as I said last week, we went to Ethiopia because they had, I'm pretty sure at that time, had more, they were hosting more refugees than any other country in the world. Okay. And part of that reason was they were surrounded, as I said last week, a 2,000 mile border with Sudan. There was a war going on there for 20 years and refugees were pouring into Ethiopia and the north Eritrea and on the east Somalia. And they were just filled with refugees. So we thought it would be a great place to go. And we've been there um, three or four times over the years. And mm -hmm. we performed for many, many refugees. And then we performed in orphanages. And we did that uh, in many countries um, for those four, uh, first six years or so. And at some point, my wife, Janet, and I came home from one of those trips. And we live uh, in a very rural, natural, beautiful place in the green mountains of Vermont. That's their name, the Green Mountains. And we have forests and meadows and gardens on our property that we love taking care of. And we started talking to each other and we realized that we performed primarily for people who don't have a home, like refugees have been driven out of their home because of war or natural disaster and their villages have been destroyed or they're too dangerous, they're filled with landmines or whatever, and they can't go back to their homes. And orphans are orphans because they don't have parents or their parents can't take care of them and they're put in this place that's sort of a home, but it's not really a home um, called an orphanage. And Janet and I looked at each other and we said, you know, I think we perform for people who are homeless, who don't have a home because we have such a beautiful home. And it's so, we're so grateful for this home that we can come here, come back to this beautiful home and get 
I was talking with Janet about this today because I knew we were going to be talking about this tonight. Mm -hmm. And she said, when we come back, oftentimes we're doing three, four shows a day in really difficult, painful places where people are really suffering. And it's, it's difficult. And um, when we come back, being in our house and in our home rejuvenates us. And we realized how important home is. Uh, so that's what comes to mind uh, right off the top of my head, Carlos. Okay, so so you, you started doing magic for these people who were driven out of their home and you you feel that you have a, 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 a your your you have a great home and, and you re-energize, so it's kind of difficult to to imagine a reality where you don't have a home, right? So it's it's it's, it's kind of kind of surreal to think that some people actually don't have a place uh, to call home, and and that that is why it's it's so important uh, to to be entertained, to have this place where, as you said last week, where, where we feed the souls. Of uh, of this of these people who, who don't have a home, yeah. And, uh, uh, um, uh, a phrase that catched the attention of many was the, the how a refugee came to you and said, "Hey, we're not only bodies, right? We they feed us, they give us give us shelter, but but we're not only bodies." So 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 that, that was so powerful to to have that you know that you know illumination of saying, "Yeah." We do. They're not only bodies, they need something else, something yeah. more yeah. than just the essentials. Something, something I was thinking about, Carlos, um, and maybe one of the things that made me think how important doing magic, one of the things about doing magic for refugees, we did some shows one day in, I'm pretty sure it was in Ethiopia, um, in a refugee camp. And that night uh, we, we were staying in the refugee camp on the UN compound inside the refugee camp. And one of the elders, the refugee elders who was now working for the UN, we were mm -hmm. eating with him. And he said, you know, he said something amazing happened today during that show. And, and I said, what, what, what was it? He said, you know, I've been in this camp for almost 20 years. And we laugh in our huts, in our little houses, among mm -hmm. our family and, and our close friends. But today, for the first time, everybody was together and we laughed as a community. And I didn't know that that was um, a rare thing, you know, that they would all get together and have a common experience and laugh together. And also you have to remember that in those refugee camps along the Sudan border with Ethiopia, there were oftentimes enemies in those camps in the sense that when they were back in Sudan, like the Arawak and the Dinka uh, were enemies back there. But now they were had to live together in, in a refugee camp with 30, 40,000 people. And they learned to live together. But what the magic did that day, this elder said, was brought these very different people together and they laughed and were amazed together. And the magic, in a sense, created a home out of that refugee camp when he said we laughed as a community. In a sense, they were at home uh, together. So I, I was thinking of that um, oh, when we were powerful. thinking about home. Yeah, a very powerful statement. And yeah, the, sometimes that, that happens when you when you when your mind starts, you know, feeling the power of amazement when you're when you're seeing a magic show, and it's just yeah. wonderful. 
And uh, we wanted to talk about, Tom, a little bit more of, of how uh, this idea of magic for the homeless is, is not necessarily or not only for for refugees, right? You, you think that, that uh, the concept of, of not having a home, of being homeless, is uh, it might expand to, to some other uh, circumstances? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Um... What do you think people think when, 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 when they hear the word homeless? Well, um, in the United States, I uh, we don't think um, immediately. I don't think Americans, uh, North Americans, think about um, refugees or orphans. They think about people who are living on the street, you know, and are carrying a black plastic bag with their clothes and a shopping cart or something, you know, and they're sleeping on the street. Um, but we think um, bigger, um, we think of homeless in a bigger sense, you know, uh, in terms of uh, refugees, orphans, even people, we do a lot of shows when we were traveling with you in the Yale Magic Society down in Columbia. We did shows, a number of shows for elders living in a home for the elderly and mm -hmm. some wonderful shows. And they're not in their home, you know? And um, that's yeah, they, very, they, this they time... But they have a house, but not a home. Exactly. And and during this COVID um, a pandemic time, um, they were often talked about here in the news that because they were vulnerable, because they were elderly and they had other diseases and stuff, they couldn't be visited even by their family or their grown children or their grandchildren. So they were very, very alone. You know, and I think my experience is <clears throat> that um, elderly people in those homes can be alone. You know, I don't think they're alone all the time. But something you were just saying reminded me, I think when we do magic for elderly people who are living in an old age home, um, they feel like children again which somehow I, also feels connected with being I, at home. I completely agree. This, uh, I completely agree, Tom. And I want to share something here in the video. Oh. For those that are listening in the podcast, we're, we're showing a, a picture of these two great, uh, uh, great uh, grandmas, we call them here, uh, uh, abuelitas yeah. in, 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 in Colombia. This is in a town called Duitama. And uh, as you said, Tom, this was on, a, on one of our magic service trips that we did with the Yale Magic Society. And we went to these small towns, and one of them was Duitama. We went to the local uh, public elderly home. Yeah. Now, these two were, were just a, a, ecstatic in the show. I, I remember that in that particular show, I was not there because I was with another group doing magic in another place. But you were there with uh, some other uh, people of the Yale Magic Society. This is- Oh Alex. yeah, there's Alex. Right. <laughs> We're showing right now uh, another picture of a, of a magician with a magic wand. And one of these uh, grandmothers is, is right there sitting with a, with a little hat. And what, what amazed me is what happened afterwards. What, what, what happened afterwards was something that was, that was really, really amazing because it was, um, it was a it, it was like after she saw that performance something sparked in her and as you said it might be that she was transported back to her youth and, and what she used to do but she went on and did this wonderful wonderful uh, like thank you a uh, gesture right and she sang a song so uh, i'm going to oh, put the yeah, video right the, the the video the, the audio might be a little bit glitchy but just bear with me <laughs> and we'll, we'll we'll see if we can see this uh, grandma 
a singing as a thank you. So it's was. Al momento que yo vi la niña, al instante yo la saludé. Aquella joven me dijo, hola joven, ¿de dónde es usted? Si usted, a usted, a usted, aquí estoy esperando en el tren, es el tren pasajero que espero, a llegar a la joven que quiero. Ya parece que voy caminando, ya parece que voy caminando. It, it it was just wonderful to see. I mean, after after that performance, see seeing her so joyfully wanted to share uh, uh, that song that, that maybe had you know uh, a special place in her heart when she was younger. But uh, do you remember how you felt at the time, or, 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 or what were your thoughts? Oh my God! I, just just seeing her face. And that other woman beside her in that other picture, and now seeing her singing, I'm, I'm not just remembering it. I'm actually taken back to that moment. It was, it was really, really wonderful, and it was such a sweet way for her to thank us for coming there. Like we gave her something. You know, we gave her this magic show and Alex and Han and the other magicians. And uh, and she wanted to give us something. So it was like an exchange of gifts. You know, it was beautiful. Um, I absolutely remember that like it was yesterday. You know, it was great. Um, That's awesome. And, and, and I just wanted to add a little bit more about that those experiences with the trips that, that we do with the magic service trips, uh, we usually do them all um, planned out, right? We, we plan everything and, and, and the shows that we do are planned and we planned to go to that elderly home and uh, we do all these planned shows, but uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, serendipity, again, as we talked in the first episode, uh, kicks in and something happened. I don't know if you remember this, Tom, but when we were in our last uh, magic service trip, which was uh, to Cape Town, the wonderful Cape Town in, oh. in South Africa, thanks to our head local magician there, uh, Jacques Lesseau, who, who just doing an amazing work there. And uh, when we were there, I remember that we were there ready to go on our first like like touristy stuff we were going to go to a market it's called the green market square oh and yeah and do you remember what the the guy at the, at the hostel uh, said that, like the clerk said do, do you remember what he said right before we said oh we're gonna go to the green Ma market square do you remember i i don't remember what the man back at the hostel said what did he say he said he said um I, I recommend that you don't go to the Green Market Square. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, do, you, do you know why? Do you, do you remember well, why? He said there, were, there were a lot of uh, refugees there. You know, I think they were living in a church or in a building there, and they were on the street, and he, he thought it would be dangerous, I think. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, please don't go. We are advising you. He's like, please let me know you understand that we are advising you not to go because the green market square has been taken over. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it was something that we were like, it, then that's where we need to go, right? <laughs> that's where we need to go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, my God. That, that was uh, uh, our first experience in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. There were a bunch, I remember a bunch of, 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 of refugees uh, like pouring out of a, of a church and we starting an impromptu performance. We didn't plan on it, but we just started no. doing it. 
so many, so many uh, wonderful things uh, over the years with Magicians Without Borders. Um, it just happened, you know, or it, it, it wasn't advised. Can I just tell a quick story from India? Go ahead, go ahead. Just for those that are not uh, uh, seeing this live, there's a picture right there of Tom surrounded by people doing a, a street magic performance, impromptu performance in the Green Market Square in Cape Town. And I and see you there too in the picture. It's good. Right there in the, in the, in the corner. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, Tom. What, what's the so so there, is this, there is this mental kind of hospital for... Um, for children in Mumbai, India. And they're put there as children, but they grow up and so they're all ages. And everything from like Down syndrome and various severe learning disabilities to schizophrenia, and all just everybody thrown together because people maybe thought that they were cursed because they had this child and they took them it has a terrible name, this place. It's called the Home for Defective Children. And the sign out front, as you're driving in the driveway, it's a metal sign. It says, Home for Defective Children. And the sign is hanging on only <laughs> one hook. And it's a defective sign. Oh, so I was telling, this man was telling me about this place. And I, I said to him, I said, I'd really love to go there and do a show for those people. And he said, well, the woman who runs the place, we'll have to call her. And I don't know, she's a difficult person. So we called her and um, I got on the phone. She spoke very, very good English, as many, many people in India do. And I said, I'd like to come and do a magic show for the folks who live in your home. And she said, oh, they wouldn't understand a magic show. No, it, you'd be wasting your time. You know? And I said, well, you know, um, I'll tell you what, I'll come and I'll bring my stuff and you can just gather them in your auditorium. And if it's not working, we'll just stop and say, thank you. This has not been, she said, I just don't, I, I said, well, let us just try it. So I wore her down and she said, okay, come. So we came and there were about, oh, 200 people, all the girls were on the right side and the boys and men were on the left side and they were all sitting in these perfect rows and they're all sitting there and many of them Down syndrome and, you know, obviously having, having problems. And she came in and she was standing along the right side about halfway up against the wall. And Janet uh, LaFleur, my wife, is performing and they're laughing and I'm doing magic and they come up and they're helping me and they were just perfect and they take the wand and they do wonderful, funny things and everybody was laughing. And something that I'd like to do is if the principal or the head teacher or the director of the orphanage or something is there, I like to go up and I have this thing, those magicians out in the audience will know it's a Vernet flower holder and it yeah. produces flowers. And so I like to go up to that big, big chief and do something silly, like pull flowers out of their ears and mm -hmm. the kids laugh if you're kind of making a little bit of fun of the principal or the head teacher or the director, whatever. So I go walking over to this woman and the kids are laughing and I walk up to her and there are tears running down her face. Wow. And she said to me, when can you come back again? Wow. I'm just almost going to cry now. And I started pulling flowers out of her ears and she's just laughing and the kids are laughing. And 
So sometimes we do, we go to places that people advise us not to go to, but they turn out to be a good place like <laughs> the green market square that day in Cape Town. I think, uh, I think uh, four, or five, four or five of the magicians performed. Now they we all performed. It was amazing. I'm just going to share this video real quick because it's it's something that it's I know it it uh, it was it was amazing to see uh, because the 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 what's the word the reaction that we got was unexpected. So I'm going to show a video of uh, us performing in the, in the Green Market Square. Uh, uh, the, the audio might not be the best, best, but let's let's just see it and then we'll comment on it. <laughs> that was such a wonderful time what, what, what was happening on the video for you guys that are that are not seeing it is we were performing for like a I, I, well, we got lost in translation, obviously, because there were so many languages there. But it was like, like, uh, uh, like the 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 spiritual le leaders somehow. So, so they they, they they went and grabbed him and say, "Hey, you want to see somebody with powers? Come here!" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember this. Uh, uh, I remember this so so vividly because. When he came, he was kind of, you know, how, how we always or, or sometimes uh, um, encounter this uh, uh, behavior of people saying, no, you can't have powers. That's supposed to be for the holy or for some greater, um, uh, you know, being. But yeah. and, and it, this performance was me telling him, hey, I don't have powers. I just want to entertain. But it was so hard for him to get. Right, so he was. He, he, we're doing this punch ball, saying one, two, three. One goes in my pocket, the other's on my hand, the other one in my pocket. How how many should there be in my hand? And the guy would be saying two, of course two. And 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 when it when it's not two, then it, it was such a, a wonderful moment of everybody, you know, gathering around that impossible moment, and it was just wonderful. We had just had a a, a great. A great time uh, over there, and actually, right now, Angelo from South Africa just uh, uh, say hi on the chat. So, hey, Angelo, how are you? Oh, Greetings. Angelo, I remember Angelo from out in the township. Yes, he ran that community center. Oh yes, we we definitely have to talk. Uh, have a, 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 a an episode just about that. Uh, that would be great. That, uh, anyway, so that, that was like the experience of, of, of us doing this magic show, uh, uh, or impromptu magic show in the in the great in a market square that is like a, a touristic uh, no. landmark. So, Tom, right now we're going to try something new. You ready? I'm ready. I just want to say hello to Angelo. Okay. Hello, Angelo. Okay. <laughs> I hope so, we see you again. Oh right. yes, we we can't wait to to go back and see you again. Actually, right now, uh, I wanna we're, we're gonna do this first time here on the on the on the show, and it's try to have another guest with us. So, uh, this guest guest is very important for us, for me particularly, because he's my you know he's my twin brother. Uh, you know how 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 life gets you you know uh, some friends along the way. Uh, life gave me a, a, a twin brother <laughs> along the way, and, and he's here. 
His, his name is Felipe Costa. He specializes in magical storytelling. He's a wonderful, wonderful magician. He spends his time, you know, traveling around the world. Uh, he usually, during these times, is uh, uh, in Europe doing uh, presentations, fairs, and magic conventions over there. Uh, right now, obviously, he can't. But he's a wonderful, wonderful magician. And uh, we just want to welcome him here. So welcome, Pojo Felipe Costa. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, so good to see you, Pojo. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm so happy to uh, have the opportunity to share some of the things we have lived with Carlos about among 20, like 22, 23 years of friendship. Wow, great. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, okay. it has been quite a present for both of us. Brother, brother from another mother. A brother from another mother, exactly. <laughs> so, and, and basically our moms are our moms. Like his mom, she's always like, Pollo, be careful with yada, yada, yada. And my mom is like, Carlos, remember to clean up your land. <laughs> we grew up like that, and we love it. Yes, yes. So, Pollo, uh, that's how we, uh, we call you in the entertainment business, Pollo. That means chicken, or how do you say Pollo in, in French? French, it's Poulet. Poulet. Yeah. Yeah. And how about in Greek? Scotopoulo. <laughs> and how about in Mandarin? It's Jiao <laughs> Ji. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. So, Bojo, um, uh, we've got some, I mean, we've had some amazing experiences doing magic. Um, and we were just talking about uh, doing magic for the refugees in downtown Cape Town. And it was just uh, uh, an amazing experience. Uh, uh, but sometimes these refugees, like like with Tom, are you know in faraway places. So I know you got some great stories about them, and uh, I would love if you if you would share a little bit more about this one. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. So that happened in two thousand and seventeen. 2018. Sorry. Uh, so I I met someone who worked for Agnur, which is one of the branches of the UN. Um, and he worked in, in El Choco, which is mental health. Maybe there's the south south yes, the southeast of Colombia. No, north, oh, north. north. Oh, El Chocó. Southeast, Southeast. <laughs> middle, Middle East. <laughs> I don't know. So El Chocó is not far from the Pacific River. Um, and it was one of the richest regions South America a long, long time ago, hundreds of years ago. Uh, and well, now they are really, really cool. Like, it's amazing how uh, complicated the situation is over there right now. So I met this guy um, and he invited me uh, and my magic assistant to uh, do some shows. And, and he actually programmed 10 different shows in four days. Um, and, and the first show was this one, the picture you were, you were showing. Uh, which they, they belong to the Embera community. And, and I love Tom's stories because they're amazing. And uh, it is so nice to share the, the stories you get up when, when you talk about social magic, they're amazing. They're, they're like just mind blowing, I will say. So uh, that was the first show uh, we took, uh, they, pick us, they picked us up in a jeep, in a, in a car, to to get to the river. Everything was, of course, brand with the UN thing. 
I put this huge car with the antenna. You know, I don't know if you have seen the UN cars, the huge antenna with satellite. I don't know. They brought us to the river and they got jumped into the into the canoe into the into the boat. Uh, and then we start like we start uh, going through the river. The water was has, has, uh, get down a little bit. Uh, and then I remember so much uh, the driver started slowing down the boat and he started doing, and I was like, what? That is good. And he was like, how do you say that in English? Going, I, I, huh? I was whistling. He was whistling. Oh, whistling. Yeah. Whistling. He, was, he was whistling. And I was like, what, what is happening? And, and then he did it on the third time. And I was like, and then I heard from between the bushes of a little island, uh, so somebody somebody whistling to respond, and they was like, and I was like, what? What is going on? So from all of a sudden, like seven or eight kids, uh, they got out from the bushes, and we parked the boat, and they helped us to get the unicycle and the, my magic bag and whatever and all the props. And uh, we, we actually walked the, into, into the bushes until we get to a point, like it was like that. It was in the middle of, like it was clear view. Uh, and nobody from the Embera community, like there were 85 people and only five of them kind of speak Spanish. So the, the, the first thing I did was I approached a little kid. He was like seven, and I asked I asked him how do you how do you say my name is Pollo in Embera language? And then he said Samaraka Samaraka Eterre. So Pollo in Embera, the Indian the Indian language, is Eterre, which I never forget. I am terrible with my memory, but I remember that. So I started my show saying Hamaraka, ha, Hamaraka, sorry, Hamaraka Eterre. Uh, and all, all the people, they have never seen magic before. That's one thing. The other thing, the concept of magic from Indian people, uh, it, it more, it's more like through the dark magic kind of idea, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that was pretty interesting i'll say so the first thing that i did because i've heard studies about this before uh i explained the type of magic that i that i do so the first thing that i did was explain the, the, the thumb the thumb you no know? so i said what i do is white magic what i do is, is kind of a, it's a trick you know and you have to explain it when some when the people doesn't even know the, the concept of, of magic. Yeah, so that, with that, 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 was, that, was, that was sorry to cut you off, Porter, but but yeah, that's similar to to, to what ha happened to us in Green Market Square. Like the, the concept of magic gets, I mean, it's different for everybody it's still now, and it's it's just wonderful to 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 see to see the reactions when they they get what they what they're what what they're seeing what that it's not you know black magic that is not something that's demonic or whatever it's it's wonderful yeah. so i, I want to ask you to please lower the volume maybe of, of your yes. of I got speakers it. so so maybe yeah. it, the, the audio gets better and and better? look at yeah look at that picture isn't that picture wonderful we're we're showing a picture of of pojo just doing this amazing pose in this dirt floor with a, uh, what's that? A uh, chicken sticking out of a box. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful picture. And all this and bit of children uh, watch magic. It's just a, a, a wonderful. So, so what do you what what do you take away of that experience, Pojo? What do you think were the best or, or the the main takeaways that you can say yeah, after going through that experience? I what do you take away? Well, I. I... I love the idea of bringing something new 
or a community who has been through situation. Uh, bringing joy for, for the people who have been uh, through this type of situation into that community. They just moved that way because, because of the guerrilla. They they have attacked them in their, their um, ancient ways. So they, they actually had to move without most of the things. And they have been there in that place for maybe one or two months. Not too much. So they were hurt and, and being there and make them laugh and share with them a little bit of, of laughter, of joy, and of course of magic. Uh, you no, know, it makes feel so so good. Um, and and that's it. I mean, uh, I I think I, I do think magic gives a lot of hope. Those type of situations. So I think humor and laughter have the possibility of open um, a little bit of light dark, in the dark moment. Yeah, awesome. that that's great, Porto, because that 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 you know ties back to what we were uh, staying with, with with Tom on the on the first uh, uh, episodes of you know this being. A, you know, using magic as a tool that generates hope, and I think that's 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 wonderful. Uh, that quote that Tom always says uh, about Harry Houdini uh, uh, of how magic can inspire hope. So, Pollo, uh, for your next story, do, do you have headphones? Maybe that that can work. Can can you plug in some headphones into the, the computer? They won't work. Sorry. Okay. So, um, so we, what I want to keep talking with you, Pollo, is. Uh, so these are people that don't have a home. They're they're, they're refugees. <clears throat> uh, but uh, through through this episode, we've talked about all the other kinds of people who might not have a home, and uh, got some wonderful stories about performing for uh, or in elderly homes. So we're now <laughs> showing a, a couple of pictures of Pojo dancing uh, with a. Uh, with a with wonderful, wonderful grandma uh, dressed in a red gown. That's like a, a, a Ruana, a red Ruana. Uh, here. So where, where are you there, Pollo? And, 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 and you know where, that, where this story is leading. So tell us about how you, you came out uh, or you ended up there and, and, and how was the show? Well, that actually connects a lot with the, with the first video that we showed. Um, that's a foundation, that's an association with Tanzania. Uh, Carlos and I have been there in a long time. And, um... Ojo, sorry, I'm going to cut you off because, yeah, that, when you talk a lot, the, the volume just goes whoop, goes down, and then we cannot hear you. So, um, so uh, how about we try... How about we try... <laughs> Then just uh, try try connecting with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, the cell phone and seeing if if you connect to the cell phone. I just send you the link right here. I don't WhatsApp. know if, if if you just connect to the to the to the to your cell phone. Maybe that that will better the audio. And I'll, Is it better? I'll what, it's the same. So while you connect, try try to connect to the to to the link I send you on WhatsApp. On the on the phone, and oh, once you, I know, uh, I know what I can do. Got it. Then then then, then I'll bring you back. So so yeah. So uh, this is called Portal de Vida. This is a, a foundation that that uh, or an, a little NGO that that the the runs here in Colombia, uh, not far from where we live. And this is you know, a, 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 when and Jill actually mentioned in the comments how <clears throat> a how a elderly people, let me just read it. She said that uh, about the video of the elderly woman singing, she said she loved her facial expressions and elderly are isolated and still can receive family and other visitors in senior facilities during the pandemic. And if that's true now, um, for that a, a, a little foundation that we're talking about, Portal de Vida, that's true all year long. They they, they they live very isolated. They're, they're near, a near a mountain here, and they, they just do great activities 
and uh, for them to get their minds of uh, of things and just to hang out and have that you know that home that we were talking about. So if we if we if they had a home, right? Uh, 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 I mean, this is the home. They, they have a house, but they don't have a home. So so they yeah. Yeah. The, the sense of laughing. Uh, uh, in a community and the sense of being together uh, uh, again brings a lot of, of uh, or, 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 or has a lot of sense here as well because they just have a great time whenever somebody vis visits and that's what I want Pojo to tell us so I'm going to try and add Pojo to the stream back and, and see if he if we have audio Pojo let me let me hear you Hello. Okay, so you so you hear. I think the audio is better. So, yeah. so I just said this was Portal de Vida and how, uh, what they do. But I want you to tell everybody about this experience that we're seeing right there. For people that are not seeing this, this is Pollo having his ear licked by one of these elderly women. She's just. You know, I, I, yeah, licking your uh, ears. So, how did we get this picture for you? What's happening there? So, so, so this is this is the deal. Um, <laughs> that, that was quite an amazing day. <laughs> um, I I can say I have never. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Like I never flirted my shows. Like, like, it's really. You, I don't know. And then shows? we did this show. Oh, any show. Um. So basically, mentor behave. So, so that that was quite a moment. That was uh, December two thousand and sixteen. I remember that because I just got from Europe, and the mentor called me and said, "Could you go to Portal de Vida because." I have been there already, so I want to see a new show. I remember that a lot. So I went there. Um, that was, yeah, I uh, that was sorry, that was 2015. Um, wow. on, on December, um, and, and Carlos he invited me to go. Uh, I went, I went by myself, and, and I was, I was doing my my show, and at the end of the show, uh, this beautiful lady. Uh, she said, can I give you a hug, please? And I said, of course. And when I approached her, she literally turned me around and licked my ear, like <laughs> completely. She, she, I was, I was, and the moment was beautiful. And everybody was like, what, what the hell is going on? And I remember that I said that is the that is the best thing that has ever happened to me in any show. I think this, this is the most romantic moment I've ever had in any show <laughs> ever, and we were all laughing so much, and, and that was quite a beautiful moment. Um, I remember, and in that in that show, I did my whole kids show. Mm. And I did it, and I did it because I have been, I have realized that, I mean, elders are like children. They need, they're really naive because things have changed a lot in a beautiful way, I want to say. Like, they're, things have changed so much that they don't, they don't know what's going on anymore in the world. They, like, they're, they're a part, you know, the problems, they, they've had a lot of problems in their lives, and now they live there. And they're trying to keep up with their lives. That's what I've been feeling. Uh, so I remember doing my kids show, like with the thief rope and the coloring book, um, and uh, I, the, the 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 paper. How do you call it, man? The um, streamer. Mouth um, coil. So the mouth coil. Thank you, Tom. Um, so that that was beautiful. That was beautiful, and I loved it. Um, so the, the show went, and, and she gave me that beautiful <laughs> bite in my ear. Um, and I got so excited, you know? And then the, the person who invited me, 
the person who invited me to the show, she approached right away and she goes, and she goes, Boyo, I'm so sorry. And I was like, why? <laughs> I have never been licked in a show. I was beautiful. And she was like, are you kidding me? And I said, no, that's the best thing that have ever happened to me. And she was like, well, I'm so happy to hear that. So, so that was great. Um, and, and you know, I think what I've, what I've learned about this is, is elders, they, they need love and they need attention. That's all they need. Uh, you know, the, their, their sons have maybe passed away. That's why they live in, in, in these places or, or they have these associations. Uh, or, or they have for, for, uh, they're forgotten, you know? Um, so after this show, after she licked my ear, we had a, a full concert, like four or five of them. They were singing to us. They were singing for me in that show because I was by myself. And in the first picture when, when we were dancing, they, were, uh, they, they made us like a little serenata you know, and they they sang they sang some beautiful some beautiful songs, and and I was so happy to to share that moment with them. They they obviously want to be heard. They want to be loved again. They want to feel important for somebody else again. Um, and and it, it has been I I can say it has been one of my favorite places to go to to do magic. Because they are so thankful that you take some time to spend with them. Because for them, what I feel, they feel time is no longer um, the same for them. You know. Um, so uh, I, I have so so much um, love. I have. I think I. This is one of the, my favorite moments in Magic, um, but by far. I mean, that kiss is way too much. <laughs> that was an amazing, amazing picture. Porto, thank you so much for being here. It was an honor. Thank and you. Sure. Thank you, Poyo. Wow. This space with you. Wonderful. No, thank you, guys. It was so I cool. Love, I love that picture. I love the woman down in the right-hand corner looking like, her mouth is wide open looking at the other woman. It's just down here. She says, what is she doing? <laughs> oh, it's so and wonderful. The, 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 the fun part is like, you know, when we when we do shows, you don't know what's going to happen. And that's beautiful no. of magic too. You will ne you never know. You literally will never know how, how people are going to react with what you did. And, yeah. and that's beautiful too. That's that's so amazing. Like you don't know what is going to happen, but something's going to happen definitely. <laughs> so um, I I think that's 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 quite a memory. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, so I, 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 I can I say one last thing about that? Please more. Just to, to to make like like something that I that I learned is is we really need to take our time to share with the elders, no matter what we do just even like sit with them for 15 minutes 20 minutes half an hour i i i think they will love it even if we don't talk or do anything they need to be felt again and that's that's something that i really wanted to share and it's it's wonderful when they um, start telling a story and you just listen to it, you know, and just listen to them. You know, it's yeah. so it's so important. You know, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I think it's, what a great way to summarize this the episode the, the uh, people that, that that have a, a listen to to or seen a magic show. Uh, and, they, and they're connected with it, as Michael just pointed out. He says, Pojo, it sounds like you really connected with your audience. Wonderful photo. And, I, and it's, it's that, like, if you really connect with them, it's, uh, it creates, it makes them want to, you know, 
express their gratitude in different ways. <laughs> and uh, as we saw some of them um, singing and uh, uh, then just, just hugging you and kissing you. And I think that now in the moment that we are, it's a challenge to, to try and restart this, you know, because wherever we are, we need to reactivate this kind of, 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 of magic that, that we do with the elderly. And, and, and we need to, to, to be smart about it, of how to reactivate it. And I think uh, with that note, I'm going to, you know, challenge everybody that's listening. How can we reactivate this show uh, without, you know, putting them at risk, being, you know, a high risk uh, population? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was uh, wonderful having this chat with you, Pojo, and Tom about magic for the homeless. So, Tom, uh, any last words? Nice. Uh, just... Uh... Uh, I feel so uh, grateful that uh, I've been given this gift, um, however magic came into my life, that I can share it and and get people to, uh, you know, lick my ear, you know. It's just it's fantastic, you know, uh, to please people, you know, and to make someone – just that alive that she jumped up and kissed your ear is just, that's wonderful. Thank you, Poyo. Thank you, Magic. Uh, no. Thank you, thank Carlos, you, for doing this. This is yes, great. I mean, this, this is just amazing. It just shows all the, the power, again, that Magic has. Uh, and, and yeah, we, we need to keep this going. We need to keep uh, this, this this work going. And as, uh, as Tom said last time, uh, uh, as, as we do all the, uh, all the times that we're here, we, we, we take these last minutes to, to ask for your support for, for in order to us uh, continue this magic work and these performances all over. We need uh, your help in order to stay uh, you know, independent and to be able to do the shows that we know are needed. So if you can, uh, please take a, a moment to visit our, our webpage of magicianswithourborders.com. And if you can, please leave a donation as small as you think. Uh, 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 it doesn't It doesn't matter of how small it is. Every bit helps, as Tom said last time. Remember, just uh, uh, $11 goes a long way in the places that we visit. So please make sure that you uh, tell your, your friends about this. If you liked it, uh, please share. And it was wonderful uh, to be here again. And we'll see you uh, next a week. So thank you again, Pojo. Bye-bye. Thank you again. Tom, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank Tom. you, Pollo and Carlos. Thank you for doing all the technical stuff. It's fantastic. Thank you. Oh, yes. You're welcome, and well, see you next week. Bye bye.